Okay, well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. We are, we are here today for the Growing Up in the Career Business Early Career Panel. My name is Michaela Seward. I am one of the campus recruiters here at Mercer. Um, I am joined today by my colleague, Ozma Khan. Um, she is one of the recruiters for our West Market and then Texas as well. Um, I manage our Midwest offices for the most part with the exception of Texas, um, as well as our Atlanta and Charlotte offices. And uh, I'm not sure if William is on right now, but I'm sure he will be joining shortly. And he is our East Coast, um, East Market, campus recruiter with the exception of Atlanta and Charlotte. So um, today we're excited to have you here to hear from and ask questions of some of our colleagues in our career practice. Um, we have a good representation of colleagues from across all three of our markets, um, introducing themselves shortly. Um, just some quick housekeeping before we get started. Everyone should be on mute at this point, um, and, and we ask that you keep yourselves on mute uh, during the duration of the intros. Um, and however, when you're, you know, if you want to ask a question, you're, you're welcome to come off mute during the time that we're doing questions and answers, um, or you can type those questions in the chat. This session is being recorded and will be posted on our Mercer Campus YouTube channel. And following this presentation, we will be following up with an email uh, with some additional information and the link to this recording, as well as to a, a brief survey about the session. Um, we would love, given this is a career panel, we would love to be as engaging as possible. So please feel free to come, you know, keep your cameras on and show your lovely faces. And, um, or if you choose to, we are happy for you to be on camera. And again, um, as they start doing their intros and you start to learn a little bit about them, or if you have any burning questions about the career practice already, go ahead and start typing those in the chat and we will get to them as we can. Um, remember, that um, we will follow up from a recruiting standpoint in, re in regard to opportunities within um, the business to apply to. So try to keep the questions focused on just kind of what it is to um, work in the career practice, what the um, you know career progression might look like, what type of work that they do, those types of things. Um, if there are any questions related to recruiting, um, the recruiters will answer those in the chat. So. With that, I am going to turn it over to Sean McCall. Sean is a partner in, in the office business leader for Mercer's Atlanta career team. He has over 20 years experience in compensation consulting. Sean has been with the firm for going on nine years in October and um, assists local, multinational, and global clients with a variety of executive and broad-based compensation issues, including strategic pay and reward program design, competitive assessments, job evaluation, and pay structure evaluation and development. And Sean will, will take it from here. Thanks, Michaela. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Excellent. Uh, welcome, welcome, everybody. Great to, to um, see you all virtually. Uh, I know this is a different way of doing things um, that we're all still kind of getting used to given the year that's in it. Uh, but glad we've got a, a, um, a decent attendance today and hopefully we can make this panel enlightening for you all uh, as we dig into Mercer's career business. Um, firstly, just thinking about career. Uh, it's, it's kind of a funny name for, for a business, given that it's also a, a different type of word. I just wanted to give a very quick overview to you all just about what career is um, from a business perspective. We're, we're aligned to three different expert areas, uh, talent, executive, and transformation. In, and that's really the areas that we provide services and solutions and products to our clients. Um, career, in, in prior years, we've been called human capital consulting, people consulting. Um, so you can take it, it's, it's really general HR consulting with a focus on, on some certain core areas like rewards, communications, uh, transformation and now digital as well. Uh, on screen here, you can just see those different communities of interest. So how we organize ourselves internally. 
Uh, looking at the bottom, you've got executive, which looks at executive rewards, so how organizations pay their top level leadership, uh, CEO, COO, um, CMO, all those chief jobs that we, we hear a lot about. Um, and that's really pay from a salary perspective, a long-term incentive and short-term incentive perspective, and also on the executive benefit side. Transformation focuses a lot on the existing processes from an HR perspective that, uh, that clients will have and how they could be streamlined uh, to, to perform a little better. Uh, and that incorporates a lot of our digital solutions. And so Mercer Digital, uh, which is an arm of uh, Mercer Career, we actually implement Workday, which is a, a HRIS system or human resources information system for our clients. Um, and then as well, obviously, the, the process changes that come with that uh, are it can be a lot for clients, so, so we help them there too. Uh, and then on the, the talent community, that's really everything else. So talent includes workforce rewards, so thinking about pay for the remainder uh, of the, the employee population, not just executives, uh, career pathing and talent management, employee research, employee engagement, uh, employee assessment and development, um, workforce analytics, uh, workforce job architecture, organizational design, anything related to people consulting uh, and people sitting in, in organizations, we typically offer a solution or service on. Um, so these are the main areas uh, that we're focused on. The, the, the panel uh, that we have for you guys today, they kind of touch mainly, I think, in, in the talent community, uh, but I think we will probably speak to each of these areas uh, because for our junior folks, we, we tend to get involved uh, across the board uh, to give that, that breadth of uh, exposure to, to each of these areas. So that's the career business. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, so while Michaela mentioned I sit in Atlanta, uh, and I actually came into the office today, even though our office is closed, I just wanted some, some peace and quiet uh, from my family at home because everybody's stuck at home uh, with COVID. Um, I'm not from Atlanta. I'm, I'm Irish, uh, so I was born in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, I've got my career path here, starting bottom right. So I actually went to college in University College Dublin. Uh, I studied English and history. I wanted to be a journalist. Um, I ended up taking a very different career path, obviously. Um, I ended up joining PwC after uh, they kind of they bought me out of my, the family business that I, I, I kind of uh, pushed on the, the compensation consulting side of that. It was a recruitment firm. Uh, so PwC bought me out, uh, but after I joined PwC, uh, it's obviously a, a big, big accounting firm, um, mainly an audit firm. Uh, in Ireland, their their reward advisory arm was pretty small, kind of a lean to to the, the larger part of the business. So Mercer and our competitors always intrigued me. Um, I had the opportunity to to move to Atlanta, where I met my my now wife. Uh, so PwC had actually offered to move me over, but move into a different area of their business. Um, so I actually uh, interviewed with Mercer and a few others, and Mercer won out. So I joined Mercer in 2011. I moved to the States in 2011 from Ireland. I got married in 2011. A lot of things happened in 2011 for me. Um, and I've progressed since then. So I joined Mercer as a principal consultant. Uh, I took on the office business leader for Atlanta, which is kind of it covers really the southeast uh, of the US from a career perspective, a career business perspective. Um, and so I, I manage now really our, our client solutions and services and all of the people uh, that sit in the career business, mainly in Atlanta, but we've got a few people in Florida, the Carolinas, Tennessee, Alabama, um, up into Kentucky and Virginia as well. Uh, so that's my path. Um, Bottom right of this page, I've got my career insights. As I said already, I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a writer. That was my original path when I left college and when I went into college as well. Um, so things change. Uh, I think consulting uh, in any capacity is a great start to anyone's career because it just gives you that, that breadth of exposure to so many different areas, so many different industries, so many different clients. Uh, so that's a, a really, really good starting point, I think. Um, and then also one of my <laughs> my uh, pieces of advice that I give to, to my junior people and to all my people, IIA, 
my wife actually tells me this as well, so this came from her originally, information in advance. If it's good, if it's bad, if it's indifferent, just make sure you're keeping lines of communication open all of the time. I think that's really important from a, from a consulting perspective where the pace uh, is often uh, pretty fast, uh, but just in, in, in general in life as well, I think it's important too. So that's me, uh, and I don't want to talk too much more about myself, so let me introduce you to the, the panel. Uh, that we have for you today. Um, I'm going to ask the panel to, to just tell a little bit about themselves. We've got a slide for each of them, uh, their background, and why they chose to start their career at Mercer as well. We'll start off with uh, Uday. Hi, so my name is Uday Singh. I'm an associate in the Los Angeles office. I actually interned with the career team in LA during my business school as well. The main reason I chose to work at Mercer, and I told these people at my office at the end of my internship, as well that either you guys are the best actors ever or you genuinely enjoy working with each other and coming to the office and that was one of my primary reasons for picking them. I started my career in economic consulting at uh, NERA which is an MMC company as well. I worked for them for a couple of years and then I got my MBA at Yale and joined Mercer full-time in 2019. So here I just have a few of my photos. The first one is the photo I use if I ever want to recruit. Uh, then the photo of me as a kid is to show that I peaked very early and then the three on the right are me doing some fun things in Michigan of late during COVID times. And uh, I'm stringing a racket in one of them and notice that I'm on the paddle board outside of water because I didn't do very well in the water. But that's my two cents and uh, looking forward to ask, answering you guys' questions. Thanks, Uday. Uh, next up, we've got Lydia. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Lydia. I sit in the Philadelphia office. Um, I am a senior analyst and I have been here for about a year now in that role and then I was an intern um, after my junior year of college at James Madison University in Virginia um, and I'm originally from right outside of Philly. Um, I have some pictures here um, of football, running. Um, I'm an Eagles fan, which is not looking good for me right now, but <laughs> football, um, running, cooking, um, that's been really great. Dunkin' Donuts gets me through, and then after work, I like to watch The Bachelor, so that's why this is here for you, too. Um, my um, advice for working here is don't be afraid to ask questions. The people you're working with know what they're doing and they really are um, happy to help. Even if you make a mistake, um, I've found that they are willing to give you advice and to help you and support you through it. Um, and that's been one of the best parts about working here is the support that you'll find from your team members. Thanks, Lydia. So the Eagles, are they, is that baseball or football? Oh, uh, football. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What, what baseball for Philadelphia? We're the Phillies. Yeah, so the Philly okay. fanatic is our mascot. Look him up sometime. He's green. <laughs> okay. I'm still not too okay with American sports. Cool. That's probably a good thing. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> okay, moving on. We've got Kerry in Chicago. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Kerry Oakland. I'm a senior analyst here in Chicago. Um, I went to Vanderbilt in Nashville. I also transferred um, to Vanderbilt after two years um, at Rice University in Houston, um, and Houston is where I'm originally from. Um, I chose Mercer. Um, I had also interned with Mercer summer 2018 um, as for really just the, the breadth of experience that you get um, working on, you know, so many different projects or a number of different projects at once. Um, just amazing experience kind of uh, going back and forth if I wanted to go into um, HR or HR consulting or just general consulting, um, but, original, but chose Mercer for, for that reason as well as other reasons that others have spoken to, um, just the community, um, the office is great. Um, and yeah, my career advice um, is just to get involved in as much as you can reasonably take on. The key word there is reasonably because there is like a fine, um, line between, you know, you want to get as, as involved as you can and, and as much as possible, but also making sure that you still have ample time to, you know, process all that and, and actually learn from these experiences. Um, but there really is just so much to learn, so many opportunities to learn at Mercer. Um, and people are so willing here to, to answer your questions, um, as others have spoken to. 
um, just think critically and ask questions as you're on um, different projects or really anywhere you are in life um, is my career advice. So Kerry, uh, as you think about that, have you learned how to say no to, to requests from, from senior consultants across Mercer? Yes? Yes, actually, and it's, and it's hard, and I learned, you know, the hard way, because I just at first, like, just said yes, 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 and then, you know, working super late, I was like, okay, I should maybe have to start saying no, no to things. Actually, just this morning, I somebody asked me if I could do something today, and I'm at full capacity today, so I said, you know, I'd love to take this on, but can I do it tomorrow, and it was no it was easy to, you know, I can do do it tomorrow. But yeah, definitely it's a skill to learn, um, saying no um, to things. It's not easy, but yeah. Oh, and these are just some pictures of um, my my dog, uh, Alfie. Well, Alfred is his full name, but Alfie for short, um, like my best friend. <laughs> cool. Looks like you guys get out quite a bit. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Finally, our final panelist is Ali Bainline. Uh, I know Ali very well because she sits here in Atlanta with me. Uh, her desk is actually outside my office door <laughs> as we work through COVID. Ali, please introduce yourself. I will. Thanks, Sean. I'm also missing the office. Um, but like you said, my name is Ali. I'm a senior analyst in Atlanta, and I went to South Carolina for college, but I'm originally from Ohio. Um, I should have put a picture on here because that normally brings up a lot of grief, but if you're a Cleveland fan, feel free to put it in the chat. <laughs> um, and on the right side, I put some of the things I like to do outside of work. Um, some of them are more creative and some of them are traveling. Um, there's also a picture of my nephew who is five months old and I got to see him about a month ago, which has been really great for the work from home um, that we've been having. And some of the other activities are paint by number, hiking, and group fitness. And then on the bottom is the podcasts that I like. Um, I normally listen to them either while I'm working or to kind of take a break from, from what I've been working on. Um, a lot of these are murder podcasts, which is one of my hobbies. Um, and then my career advice that's becoming really relevant right now is being willing to accept uncomfortable opportunities. <laughs> because there's always something new coming up. And even if you think you've done that type of project before, you haven't done it for this client before. So this is the time to say yes, kind of like Carrie said, when you can, and tastefully say no if you really don't have the time. Um, and people are pretty accepting of that. If you have a lot going on, they're willing to share and kind of help get the work done as a team, I would say. Um, but this year, especially, I've been working on a lot of new things, especially because of COVID. And that's been really, really exciting for me to kind of get into some stuff I never thought I would have the opportunity to. Cool. Thanks, Ali. Yes, it has been a, a novel year <laughs> for everybody, I think. Um, cool. Well, that's, that's the panel we have. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody's faces. Uh, and we've also got a chat. Um, a lot of questions coming through. Um, I'm just going to ask one more question, and that will give me some time as the team answer to, to take a look through all of your questions too and uh, kind of uh, assimilate them and figure out how we want to ask them. So next question to the group, and Lydia, I'll, I'll ask you this first, and then we can move through the team. As a new hire in, in Mercer career, what, mm -hmm. what should our people expect on day one, on month one, on year one? <laughs> so day one, I was really nervous. I made my dad take the train with me into the city so that we could find the building. <laughs> um, but it was a really great experience right away. Um, one of the reasons for that with me is that we were assigned a buddy who is at a similar level to you um, and then a people manager right away. So you have someone with a lot more experience and then someone that you might um, be at a similar level that, um, as you that you can ask your questions with right away. I found there are a lot of trainings um, that help you get familiar with what you'll experience right off the bat during that first week. Um, and then additionally, what was really great is they spent a lot of time introducing you to the rest of the team, um, which was really, really helpful because you get to meet everyone, um, know about what types of projects you might be working on, and then actually, after that, I got assigned to some projects really quickly. 
Um, so you kind of dive in right away. Um, and what I found is as you get more comfortable, you start getting more and more responsibility through that. Um, yeah, so I think coming in, meeting the team, starting the learning process, and then starting that business process and gaining responsibility along, along the way. Very good. Uh, same question to, to Kerry. And we're, we've got folks from different offices here, so it's, it's intriguing to see the different office um, experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think really, you know, similar experience in that, like, I was, you know, nervous the first day. The, the first couple of weeks um, at Mercer, is, or at least in the Chicago office, is uh, pretty structured with training um, and just getting to know the office. Um, our office does, like, an office mixer where we went to um, the house of uh, one of the, the partners here in our office um, and just had a great, like, get to know everyone sort of um, evening after work. Um, we, yeah, the the first yeah couple weeks is, is just a lot of training um and then the first like really six months and a year really um it's just a lot of like you know this ramp up process where you're just learning like every single day like there's not a day that goes by where i just don't learn a lot honestly of like new things um which is great to say um for just experience but there really is like i mean i mean a little bit over a year now um into my career here at mercer and every single day i'm still learning so much um new things so there really is like quite a bit of a ramp up phase it's just really crit critical to ask questions and um you know try to get on as many i try to get on as many different projects as i can in terms of just work type um to expand my just what i'm familiar with um and yeah but it's been been a great great first year so expand on that a little bit terry when you think about the work type and the different projects that you, you try to get on what, what do you mean by that work type is it back to workforce rewards or executive rewards or communications? Have you had that ex full exposure to, to all of our disciplines? Exactly. Yeah, I just uh, like I try to get on, you know, exec rewards projects are totally different than broad based compensation projects is to so two totally different employee populations um, incentivized completely differently. Um, work streams are similar, but like also there's, you know, so many different nuances, talent strategy work, um, job architecture work. There's so much um yeah different project types um and coming in like you know right after college it's like what you know what am i really interested in it's really um you know people are are, are interested to know like oh what types of work do you like enjoy doing um and just like are good at doing and so it's just really good to you know get a lot of different experiences um when you first start and then like as you know time goes on like you know start noticing like oh i really like like you know i like broad-based conversation analysis so like I raise my hand, start asking for more broad-based work, um, and we have a really great staffing coordinator who just like if I, you know, have not been on a certain project, like HR transformation is a project type like I really want to uh, be on, but I haven't really been on an HR, um, it's in more in-depth HR transformation project. So, but my staffing manager knows that, and so when an HR P project comes through, like I'll be the first one um, to get staffed on it just because I've raised my hand. Um, but yeah, just getting involved in as many as many different things um, as possible, not like pigeon, pigeonholing myself into one sort of work stream um, off the bat. Is what I mean by that. Yeah, I, I think that's really important for all of our, our junior consultants and um, not to, to focus too much in a certain area. Um, when we need to be a really good consultant, we need to understand the broader offerings on, on the Mercer solution side, but also the broader needs on our client side as well. So getting exposed to all of those different areas is really, really, really important. Um, let me move on to, to Ali. Um, Ali, what, what should new hires expect on their, their first day from the Atlanta office? I know, I know the experience here is just phenomenal because I'm here. <laughs> That's true, though. Um, it, was, it was a really easy, like, smoothing in process, I would say. Um, and kind of like what Lydia said, they really get you involved right away. So there won't be a lot of idle time just waiting to be put on projects. Um, but part of it also is, is just asking to be involved. So I remember in my first week, month, et cetera, if I wanted to just sit on a call to hear what was going on or to learn about it, and, and you promise to stay quiet and not peep up, um, you can observe anything. Everyone's really willing to let you listen in or look over their shoulder as they're working on different things. So you can start to get a feel of some of the things you might be asked to do. 
And then when that time comes and you are asked to do them, um, I have a really great resource next to me in the office typically, and I peek over her cube all the time. Hey, can you take a second look at this? Or can I run this by you? And people are willing to stop what they're doing to just take a look. Um, it kind of breaks up the day a little bit. But I think the biggest thing is you just immediately feel like you're working. Um, there's not really a time where you're sitting by yourself or or not feeling like part of the team yet. They really try to put you on projects and get you comfortable with the materials right away so that you can start kind of finding your your projects if you're not going to be fully stopped right away. Okay, cool. Um, and finally, over to the West Coast, the best coast, Ujay. What, what should we expect in, in the West Coast? So I would say there are probably two different paths possibly, like if you've interned before and if you're not, so if you have interned before, it definitely like full-time starting is far more smoother. You do go through the same training process. Uh, the West Coast had a pretty structured process for us as well. Like our first two weeks were designated training where we, where we got trained by different consultants from throughout our office and our West Coast team is pretty large too. So there are 40 people. So you slowly got, you, you slowly meet everyone and once you approach the end of week two, they slowly start staffing you on a few projects as well. And the good thing that Mercer did is like I, I started at Mercer as an associate, but they basically assumed that everyone starts at the same footing. So my beginning first projects and tasks would like actually start at the analyst level as well so that like they can see so that I understand the processes all the way from the bottom to all the way to the top. So I'm sure even Sean can assess, attest to that, that. He probably knows a lot of the work that the analysts and the associates are doing because if you don't understand what their work is, it's very hard for you to do it very well. So they do a very good job to build that foundation. And then at some point, they just throw you in the deep and expect you to find out things. But that's when I believe you do you do your best learning as well. And that uh, that's definitely part of consulting. So I would say expect a little bit of that as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think that's it's part of consulting Uday, but I think it's also very much a part of the Mercer onboarding culture. It's learning on the go, it's developing on the go. Um, and there's always that support to back you up. As Ali mentioned, we've, we've got our cube farms, obviously, or different office layouts, uh, but there's people there that you can call on if you're running into difficulties. Other yeah, analysts absolutely. might be there for a couple of years and even up to, to partner level, we're, we're all here. Uh, to help and with the same aim to make sure we're delivering quality solutions to our clients at the end of the day. Um, I'm just going to run through some of the questions. There's a lot of questions coming out from the chat. Um, Erica Very at the, the very first question. What's the favorite aspect of Mercer's company culture? Um, let me start here with, let me go back to Ali. I'll, I'll work up my listing. Um, <laughs> And I think it's going to be slightly different here again for each office. So let's let's give a flavor of, of what goes on in every office as well. Ali, Atlanta and Southeast perspective. <laughs> sure. Um, ours, I would say, I hope is unique. Um, we have a minister of fun. So there is a person who regularly makes sure that everyone in the office is interacting, doing exciting things. So we normally do it once a month. Um, obviously, right now, we've been unable to gather together regularly. But some of the items we first did when I started were like a, a happy hour or one of Sean's favorites is decorating for Halloween. Um, so we decorate the office in full Halloween garb and everyone honestly blocks their calendar. We order food, we have a, a good time about it. Um, and it's a good break and then we get to enjoy it for the whole month. So we do small things in the office like that or we also, played tennis one night after work. We scheduled and rented a bunch of courts. So there's lots of activities kind of pre-scheduled. If you're available, you join um, and everyone's obviously welcome. Um, I would say in the office, it's definitely pretty casual, I would say, pretty approachable. People are willing for you to just stop by, knock on their door. It's definitely a walk-by culture, not everyone has their doors closed and don't bother me. Um, so that part is really nice. And people are free chatting around, collaborating over the cube, like I mentioned earlier, or you can jump in a conference room and work together that way. But for the most part, I feel pretty comfortable in the office. I wouldn't say that it feels like uptight or scary, or I wouldn't be able to approach anybody that walks by me. So that part is really nice to come in every day, just feeling like it's my, my second home, which right now I only have one home. 
it's all all here, but I'm looking forward to coming back to the office if that if that puts any sentiment around it. Yeah, I, I know you've been in the Atlanta office a little bit, Ali, as well. But speaking of decorations, we just got to get our St. Patrick's Day decorations down. It's now October, <laughs> and they're still up. It'll be time for Halloween. <laughs> Michaela and I were talking about Halloween, and I'm like, "There's nobody in the office. What's the point in decorating?" But we might still do. <laughs> Michaela is our minister for fun here, by the way. Um, Kerry, Chicago. Absolutely, yeah. I can. I was just thinking. Um, we uh, just did before COVID, like a goat yoga class. Um, so in regards to, to culture, like, yeah, just amazing. Like the whole office went out and did goat yoga. Um, so in, incredible, incredible group activity. Um, we also, yeah, there's a lot of, um, there, we have like a social committee um, with just different, different, different outings. Um, even during COVID, like we have done the activities we just go like in the park and um, on a just on a blanket, like sitting, you know, six feet away from each other, um, and just to connect. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy, like not seeing, um, you know, these colleagues that uh, you, you typically see every single day. Um, and yeah, we also every single Friday we do FaceTime Friday in the office. Um, we just go sit in the boardroom, um, sort of wrap up the um, the day, um, and connect with each other um, informally as we're like we enter our time. Um, finish up any, you know, last minute uh, loose ends on projects. Uh, and that's, yeah, a, a great uh, bonding activity. Um, office office culture is, is amazing. I, like, I was actually telling my, this is maybe team, I'd like, with my therapist is like, you need to have more, like, you're not getting out enough, like, as you usually do with the, you know, your, your new work, like, you should go, you know, be more, have, like, more, external outings like you soon i'm like i actually seriously feel like my social needs are very filled like just like with all my colleagues like on a day-to-day -day basis like you know obviously like we're all co-workers and like that you know our clients come first but like i also have like really amazing friends like at mercer like it's just you know chat streams are always open like we're you know it's a very very cordial um like fun environment with just amazing people um so Great, great office culture. Stephanie, work hard, play hard. Uh, and it's probably the same across most of our offices. Lydia, do you want to talk a little bit about our, our business resource groups from an office culture perspective? Yeah, um, that would be great. So that's actually something that really um, helped me um, get involved right away. So throughout college and even before that, I've been um, really interested in community service and volunteering um, and that's something that's really important to me um, and I didn't even expect that that could carry over into um, company culture too but we have these business resource groups and one of them is Mercer Cares um, which literally is like a like company-wide um, community service group and we have different chapters in um, each of the offices so I this goes back to the point about um, just asking for opportunities. Like right away, I jumped on that and I was like, hey, I want to be involved in this. I want to do this. Um, and that progressed really quickly, actually, into me just being the newest committee member to getting asked to actually be a co-chair for that group um, in the Philadelphia office. So we've been planning service events for COVID. We were trying to figure out what to do. Um, so we actually wrote letters to local nursing homes and we did it on Zoom together. Um, and then we had a follow up happy hour to talk about what we had done individually. Um, and it was really great because Louie, who is the president of US and Canada, came to our happy hour in Philly, came virtually <laughs> um, to talk to us about our experiences. Um, and in addition to the community service one, there's some um, for rising professionals. So that's just for us, for you guys, um, as we're joining the company and that's networking events, learning events, um, a lot of training opportunities too. Um, a new one that's exciting is we're starting, um, we're actually like really emphasizing our diversity and inclusion group right now as well. Um, and we're actually starting a book club to talk about some of the um, 
topics and issues in our country right now. So that kicks off next week and I'm excited for that too. Cool. Yeah, uh, th th there's a lot of business resource groups. I think one of the ones you, you missed out, uh, the LGBTQ yes. uh, mm -hmm. business resource group as well. So there's lots of different ways to get involved. Not really from a business perspective, but you're getting to know folks from our other lines of business in our in our health and wealth business too, as well as career, obviously. Um, they are a very very important part of of the culture across all our offices. Um, Uday, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift gears slightly quickly on on you for this one. Interesting question coming through from uh, it's from Erica again um, to to all the panelists. Can you go into more detail uh, about Mercer's economics and empathy strategy? I'm, I'm probably putting you a little bit on the spot today, but I'm oh. confident in you. <laughs> so I, I read a little bit about that. I haven't, that's, I'll preface this that like Mercer has a lot of good initiatives and they don't always flow down to the whole way through. So this one, I just read a little bit about it and I Googled it. It's just an idea of how do we treat our employees co correctly, like and appropriately in these current times. And especially like, I think our CEO has actually done a very good job, even when like COVID came out our global CEO made a company-wide announcement that we would let no one go during this initial period of the pandemic. And our, like our company stood by it. And like Mercer was one of the very few companies that like took a very strong stand and made a global stand for a time like this. And we also try to emphasize this in our consulting engagements as well, so that we, we, we have an empathy angle because people are all that matter at the end of the day. And I, I'll let you guys know that employers of today are very concerned about your opinions as well. This new modern generation doesn't just like to work because a company has a big logo. They want to work for a company that has some purpose and is doing the right things in the community. And if employers don't position themselves in that way, they will not have access to the best talent of the next generation. So it's kind of a two-way street and you guys and you will have a big hand to play in that as well. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. That's another important consulting phrase, being able to think on your feet and you tick that box in there. Well done. Um, and yeah, you got it right. I'll continue answering for you, um, as well as internally from a Mercer perspective, that uh, empathy towards our own employees, but pushing that out to our clients as well. We want to understand what their employees are most interested in. And that's going to vary by demographic, by age group, uh, by country that they live in, if they're multinational organizations. Let's get their thoughts, what they want from a, a total rewards perspective, from a career pathing perspective, from a mobility perspective, uh, and build that into our business strategy, which ties to the economic piece, obviously. We want to, to grow the business. We need to grow revenues so we can keep all these people employed. Um, and combining that, getting the employee research done uh, combined with our, our other services and solutions on the reward side that's really a, it's becoming a bigger solution uh, than i think any of us thought it would be uh, particularly given covid because everything is changing so fast in the last year uh, and everybody's working from home is working from home working for for your employees a typical question are we giving uh, employees enough flexible options to work from home do they need help setting up a home office all of that feeds into the overall employee value proposition and the employee experience for our clients. So getting it right is really, really critical. Uh, Lydia, Ali, Kerry, any, anything else you guys want to add to that? Did Uday and myself cover it well? I think so, yes. <laughs> cool. Um, let's dig in a little bit to, to kind of projects, uh, career projects. Um, Kerry, tell us a little bit more about the, the kind of the project types you're working on, the length of the projects, who you're typically working with. Oh, cool. yeah. So really there's no like set answer to, to any of those questions, which is the great thing about Mercer. Like it really, the project length varies. Um, I, you know, have been on projects where they're like, you know, have a really quick timeline of like just a month. And then there's some that, you know, have a timeline of, much longer, um, especially with COVID, there's a lot of uh, clients that are, you know, t pausing their projects or extending the timelines. So there's definitely a shift even within the, the set um, project timelines. Um, and then in regards to, to different types of projects, um, yeah, like broad based, um, you know, there's a lot of different, yeah, in types of projects um, you can get involved in as well. Um, and the last thing kind of projects, um, and type of projects, and there, there's one other criteria I was going to see too, I forget. I can't remember. 
Okay. <laughs> but there, there's so, so many, so many different opportunities, um, so many different types of projects, which is really the exciting thing um, to me and what really drew me to Mercer is just so many different, different opportunities to get involved in on the day to day. Um, so how, how many projects are, are you guys typically working on at the same time? Is it five, 10, 15, or is it one larger project uh, for one specific client? Um, I would say it depends, like, perhaps, like, uh, three to five, but I would say is, like, a standard, um, but then, like, also, like, I'll take on ad hoc requests for, like, uh, you know, smaller projects that I'm not, like, fully staffed on, or if there's, like, a really large project um, that's more time intensive, um, like, could be devoting any, perhaps, like, four days, even, like, a week on a particular client if it's just a really intensive project. Um, so it really ebbs and flows um, in terms of how many projects you're on um, at one time. Okay. Uh, Uday, what's it like in the West Coast? I would say it's similar. This year has been a little bit of an exception because with COVID happening, Mercer has been re-diverting resources a little bit and I've been supporting some other teams as well. So my projects have definitely gone up a little this year, but I would say overall career has, we focus on more projects. So like we have, I would say five to six projects and then three, I would say about three to four are typically active and one is somewhat dormant. And in consulting, we can never really decide our, decide the duration of the project. So projects end up going, you think it's going to be a three week project, but it might be a six week project. And like I was, I'm on two of my projects that I thought would be done two months ago, but we're still going full steam ahead. So the, there, there are aspects like that, that you don't exactly control. But at the same time, I would say about, I, I, I echo, uh, carries sentiment five five to seven are about active okay uh alia i know you uh lydia what what, what about you <laughs> same question numbers of projects any any bigger projects that you've taken on in, in your career at mercer as well so we are really busy right now um i work primarily in communication so a lot of writing um and open enrollment so enrolling for benefits is full swing right now. Um, I literally was just like counting um, and I'm on eight active projects right now. Um, and I would say it doesn't, doesn't usually get below five year round. Um, but right now, especially, I am not bored at all. <laughs> I think it's great with that too, your role kind of shifts between the different projects. So you don't get bored, you're working with new people and with new clients. Um, I expected it kind of to be you're assigned to a client, that's what you do. Like, we'll see you when the project's over. Um, but it hasn't been like that at all, um, which actually keeps it really interesting and engaging. So are, are all of you guys working across a lot of different industries as well? I see a nod from Lydia, Uday, Kerry, same. Yeah, I, again, I think that's one of the benefits of, of Mercer and one of our differentiators as you think about our approach uh, to consulting, the number of different projects that you, you get to work on at the same time, which can be a lot. Um, and then also the, the variance of the, the industries that they're in. You can focus, we've got different industry verticals for sure, uh, at an, an MMT, our parent company level, and at a Mercer level. But if you wanna get involved in different industries, you can. Um, and through our staffing managers uh, that the, the panel here get staffed on these projects, uh, that's how we, how we control it. Um, just from a, thinking about the, the overall experience as you progress through your career at Mercer into kind of senior associate and principal and then partner level as well, uh, the panel here are mainly focused on delivery, uh, but at the same time, our principals and partners on the career side in particular, were out developing more business with existing clients and with new clients and prospects as well uh, that will turn into projects that will be staffed by, by the panel and others as well. Uh, quite a lot of uh, analysts and associates across the country. Um, and that's really how it works. Um, on the open enrollment side, that's where there's a lot of synergy with our health uh, line of business, um, which is uh, obviously a different line of business, but we work in conjunction with them so we, we can kind of see what's happening on, on that side of the business because we've got to help them communicate uh, and our clients communicate to their employees what's changed this year from a, a benefits perspective, particularly for 2020, uh, when everybody is so concerned about health. Um, so it's really a, a critical time this year. 
and a busy, busy time for, for everybody in Mercer's career too. So all hands to the, to the pumps. Um, just looking through the questions again, uh, sticking on the, the project side of things, um, name a project, and don't go into too much detail on the, the client names or anything like that, a project that you guys are most proud of um, on working on, and why so? Uh, and let's start with, with you, Ali. Sure. Um, I'm glad you asked because I actually just thought of one that is kind of a different experience than um, some of the others have shared. So earlier this year, I went on site with a client. So instead of having five to 10 or however many projects um, that I was working through each day, I kind of switched gears for a little bit. And I went to this client's office in Charlotte um, pretty regularly. And I would kind of became part of their team. So I was still an outside consultant and I was providing some of our best practices and our um, recommendations and kind of the experiences that our team can bring, but I was sitting in their office a lot of the time. Um, and the reason that I liked that so much and I think it was the first that came to mind was because I was able to kind of test all the things that I've been doing with others um, on my own. So they asked me questions and I, started to know the answers quicker. And I was impressed and like really proud that I could reiterate all those things I've been working on for a few months um, in a different setting, kind of out on my own. And kind of something that we've talked about before is, is the timing that they actually hit pause earlier in the year and they've restarted. So just this morning, I was still working on site with them um, on their computer. So I've got two computers and I do kind of back and forth so now it's become more of a typical project, um, which also fits my schedule, but it was a really cool experience that only a few people in our office have had that I know of um, to actually go be at a client and see it from that perspective. And then I've been able to take that to other clients and understand why they sometimes take a little bit longer to get back to us or why they have a hard time making decisions. Um, it's just something that we don't always see that side of for all the projects. Cool. I obviously know the, the client as well, so I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that experience so much. Um, I did. Uday, same question to you. Project you're most proud of. Sure. Um, I guess I'm going to slightly generally answer that question. Some of the new age clients we've been working with have been really fun. So I've been working on some gaming companies and an electric scooter company. So what's been very interesting with these clients is that a lot of the times they don't want the partner's opinion and they want your opinion. So you have to be very ready during the meeting because their market set, their market who they're targeting is more likely to be your age and less likely to be the partner's age. So the Changing dynamics in the marketplace means that you need to be very differently ready for these new clients because you're, you're no longer just going to be fulfilling the analyst role. You might be suddenly have to lead some parts of that project as well. And I've been put in positions like that right during the call where I'm like, I, I think the partner's got this meeting, but no, the client wants to hear from me. So you have to be very ready for that. So that's been something that I've really enjoyed. Cool. And yeah, that's another point for me for, for our junior talent as you guys are starting out in your careers. I always want to get you out to a client meeting. Again, it's, it's probably easier now that, that they're all done virtually, but get you to a client meeting in person so you can offer up your opinions too, because it does matter. Uh, and that perspective, that difference, that diversity uh, in consulting thought and process is really, really important. Um, and it matters to our clients. Um, so, good. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time a little bit, so I'm gonna try and dash through a couple more questions. One question around performance reviews, and then another question around development of technical skills to progress individual career goals uh, and how that works. Uh, I'm going to try and combine them. Um, I'll talk a little bit about performance, the performance piece of it, uh, and then I'll push back to, to the panel to answer about developing those technical skills, uh, which I think we may have touched on a little bit already, but we can go into a little more detail. So for performance, uh, we've actually changed that up this year. Uh, <laughs> We've moved to a new model called Perform and Grow. Um, so it's, uh, we're moving from a, a five rating system, so one being the worst at the end of the year, to, and five being the best, we've now gone to three. Um, the main goals for our junior uh, team from the financial side, it's around billable hours. Uh, so you set a certain amount of hours each year that you need to hit, basically, or exceed if possible, and most of, most of our team exceed. Um, as you progress through Mercer and, and up in, into more senior levels, 
added to those billable hours, you're, you're assigned a sales goal as well. Um, and that increases as your billable hours go down. Uh, so it's very much a leverage model uh, because we don't want partners whose billable rate could be upwards of $1,000 an hour doing some Excel analytics because uh, that wouldn't be uh, very effective or efficient for our clients. Um, so we leverage down to, to our junior folks. As well as those financial metrics, uh, we do like our, our junior people to, to set other goals. What other areas of the business do you want to explore? How do you want to advance your technical skills? Where do you want your career to go to in Mercer? Do you want to stay in the career business? Do you want to explore health a little bit more? Do you want to get into the communications side of the, the career business? And there's so much there on the career side and so much opportunity. I always like to set goals around that. And even goals like attending client meetings, working on business development opportunities, working on proposals, um, meeting folks outside of your office, meeting people in, in other lines of business, all really, really important for your development uh, in, in Mercer, uh, regardless of whatever line of business you're sitting in. We want to have the best talent and the, the talent most equipped to, to help our clients. And like I said, having that diversity and exposure to all these different areas is really, really important for, for your growth. On the technical skills, um, I'll, I'll push that one back to the, to the, to the panel. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of done, I think we've mentioned already, not on the fly, but there's a lot of on-the-job learning. Um, how have you guys advanced your own technical skills, um, and how have you tied that back into to kind of achieving your own goals? Uh, let's start with Lydia again on this one. So I think learning on the job is definitely a really important part of it. And that goes into asking questions, um, as we've said throughout this. But also what I've experienced is before I even ask, I'll have people who are more senior saying, hey, um, like, do you want to learn about this? Do you want to sit on a call? What are your thoughts on this? Which has been really helpful. Um, and then the other thing is, in addition to learning on the job, um, we have so many um, trainings available, and that's actually part of the goals you set um, for yourself each year. What do I want to learn this year? What do I want to get better at? Um, for me, that was um, project management and client management, too, because I really want to do more of that. Um, and that's literally something that Mercer has prioritized for me this year getting me on those projects and um, online trainings for those as well. Um, so that's been really, really helpful for me. Cool. Uh, Kerry, same question. Absolutely, yeah. So a great thing about Mercer is that um, we're really intentional about setting our goals. Like every single year we, you know, have sit down meetings. I have sit down meetings with my manager. We discuss, you know, what, what things you want to progress this year. Um, think critically about what goals to set. Um, and then actually set like actionable, um, you know, measurements um, of how, you know, you can go about setting these goals. Like one, for example, I wanted to get involved in business resource group to, um, you know, meet uh, other people in other lines of business um, and get more involved. So I, then I joined the, um, the Pride BRG here at Mercer. Um, that was like one way that I completed my goal, um, that, that one specific goal. Um, and in regards to development of technical skills, there are just so many trainings. Um, on the job learning is, is the main way I would say I learn technical skills. And I try to like, you know, think of as I'm working on an analysis I've maybe done before, like, but like, I'm thinking, oh, how could I, now this is the second time I've done this sort of analysis, like, how could I make it even more efficient um, and do some Googling for different Excel functions that I could maybe incorporate um, into ways just how, you know, how can I improve this analysis um, and sort of incorporate those technical skill learnings into on the job learning. Um, and actually that's something that I worked into a goal for um, this year as well, um, is just to learn more Excel keyboard shortcuts. Um, because everything you do in Excel, there's a keyboard shortcut to and as you know, I, we've worked a lot of Excel and so that is a, a really great way to um, save time. I mean, so that's a, one thing that I'm like actively working on um, this year um, and yeah so many different trainings I went to an HR uh, transformation training um, in Atlanta earlier this year um, that Mercer organized for uh, just employees all throughout the practice I'm um, really great way to learn more about that 
um, work stream um, and get involved and connect with other HRT interested um, members of Mercer. Um, yeah, just so, so many different ways to develop your, your skills here. We also have just subscriptions to so many different um, learning platforms like LinkedIn, edX, um, Harvard Learning, um, so, so, so many resources available to Mercer colleagues for learning. There is a lot. It can be quite intimidating, I think, um, just the, the level of resources that are available to everybody. Uh, we do an okay job, I think, at, at kind of cataloging it all, but I, I still think there's probably improvement we can make there. <laughs> but that's probably a good thing, but there is so much out there. Um, I know we're coming up on time. Very quickly, I, I see Dishti asked about project management um, and how important that is. It's extremely important. If you think about the number of different projects that, that each of our, our teams uh, are working on, um, keeping them in line, keeping our clients, and uh, making sure they're, they're getting us the information they need to, making sure we're delivering as well, massively important. Um, we don't expect our, our junior analysts and associates to project manage. Uh, that's more starting, particularly for larger projects at the, the senior associate and principal levels. But for smaller projects, again, if you want to set it as a goal, uh, to, to manage some, some smaller projects over the course of the year, by all means. That's an area that we want you to develop, so go for it. Um, I'm going to finish up. We've kind of avoided it, uh, the, the COVID question. Um, how has life changed for the panelists uh, with the impact of COVID, working from home versus working in the office? We've spoken a lot about the office cultures, um, but how has COVID impacted your day-to-day? -day? Uh, and I think, Michaela, we're, we're probably just out of time then. Yes, I see not. The last question, I will pose that one to, to Ali to start with. Sure, um, I'll go quickly because I know we're at the top of the hour. Um, but a few things are, I learned how to use instant Zoom. So now I can pop up on my coworker screen and ask them a quick question, just like I was popping up over their cube before. So we're still able to kind of collaborate quickly, um, but together. And I've also learned that we're really flexible. So I like working in the morning. So a lot of times I get up at seven or 7.30 and start working then. And other people are night owls and they're still online at 11 at night. So working from home, especially if you have like kids or other things, which I don't, but if you do the flexibility that we've been having has been really accepted by everyone. And you know that if you're not online, it's because you're taking care of something else that has to get taken care of. So that part has been really nice about working from home is the responsibility that we've all had just being flexible to get your own things done. Cool. And um, same question to Uday, besides going out surfing and stuff like that. Sure. So I would say quickly, I would say uh, the meetings with leadership has have increased because like I feel uh, leaders are feeling like, you know, we don't have that office cohesion anymore. So there have been more touch points, which has been very good. I've also personally been working with more people. So I've actually met new people and new teams at Mercer that I did not know when I sat at my cubicle. So in that way, it's been a little expanding as well. I do miss my office workers and I feel like those bonds are a little weaker now that I haven't seen them in person since March. But in terms of meeting new people at the company, it has been very cool. Like even like I had never met Sean before and most of these panelists. So there've been a lot of new opportunities as well. So depends on like what your framework has been. There've definitely some negatives, but there've been some positives as well. Cool. Uh, we're, we're definitely over time. So I'm gonna call it there. Uh, let me thank first of all, first up our panelists. So Lydia, Uday, Kerry and Ali, thank you so much for, for your inputs. Uh, thank you to all of our potential career applicants as well for attending. I hope this is really useful for you all. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to Ozma, to Michaela, uh, or to William, uh, your recruiters. Um, I, I assume they'll be following up with you guys as well. Um, but uh, Michaela, I'll let you finish this out. Yep, and I'll echo that. Thanks, Sean, and thanks to all the panelists for your participation um, and insight. And um, thank you for your engagement to the students. Um, thanks for taking an hour out of your day or an hour plus two minutes out of your day um, to join us and to learn a little bit more about Mercer. And again, as Sean just mentioned, I will be following up with an email shortly with the recording of this, as well as um, some additional resources for you that may or may not be repeats if you other events this, so far. So at any rate, have a great rest of your day, a wonderful weekend, and we will see you all soon. Thank you all. Take care.